shortly after the 2008 election, Vice President Joe Biden confided to top supporters that it was essential that their program be implemented at lightning speed. Because their agenda was so unpopular, they knew Obama would lose support quickly. Obama's handlers were in a race to pass a raft of legislation before the people discovered that Obama was just a slicker, updated version of previous puppets. Obama is the New World Order's closer. It's his job to repackage and solidify the tyrannical policies of George W. Bush as progressive and trendy. So part of my job, I think, as president is to make government cool again. Chris Hedges, author of Empire of Illusion, explained it succinctly. President Obama does one thing, and brand Obama gets you to believe another. This is the essence of successful advertising. You buy or do what the advertiser wants because of how they make you feel. Through Obama, the global establishment are now putting their entire program into high gear. Obama is attempting to dismantle the Second Amendment with more than a dozen victim disarmament bills now in Congress. The key is going to be, I think, for us to come together and say, People do have an individual right, and there's nothing wrong with common sense gun laws. Hate crime and cyberbullying bills in the House and Senate would effectively criminalize free speech protected under the First Amendment. It is absolutely true that NAFTA was a mistake. A senior member of the Obama campaign called the Canadian government within the last month to say that when Senator Obama talks about opting out of the free trade deal, the Canadian government shouldn't worry. The operative said it's just campaign rhetoric and don't take it seriously. This, uh, the Canadian government put out a statement indicating that this was just not true. So I don't know who are the sources. It wasn't true. Amid all of the denials, sources at the highest level of the Canadian government who first confirmed that a call was made, late this afternoon, reconfirmed that a call was made. President Obama is promoting the creation of a North American Union and is attempting to expand NAFTA and GATT. President Obama is pushing nation-ending blanket amnesty for more than 20 million foreign aliens living illegally inside the United States. He's also overseeing the hijacking of health care by the federal government, which will nationalize more than 20% of the U.S. economy. And you want us to believe that a government that can't even run a cash for clunkers program is going to run one seventh of our U.S. economy. No, sir. No. Obama is continuing the transfer of national sovereignty to unelected international bodies like the United Nations and World Trade Organization. And most important of all, under the cover of banking reform, Obama wants to hand dictatorial power over the United States economy to an offshore private banking cartel known as the Bank of the World. Richard, what happened to all those threats from France's president about storming out and, and, and about having a global regulator uh, who was going to reach across borders and be able to, 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 to deal with markets no matter what country they were in? They have opened up the idea of there being some form of other regulator across countries, and I think that's going to come So back. is this some sort of new world order, which, which Gordon oh, Brown kind of alluded to? I think a new world order is emerging, and with it the foundations of a new and progressive era of international cooperation. The finance heads of the 20 industrialized nations met again in late September of 2009 at the G20 summit in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. At that meeting, ministers called for an end to the dollar as the world reserve currency. They also called for a strengthening of global governance and called for a new world order. While the bankers were busy carving up the world at the G20 summit, Barack Obama was in New York City at the United Nations because he's got a new job to chair the United Nations Security Council, the most powerful position in the world government body. President Obama does what no other U.S. president ever has. As President Obama presided over the U.N.'s most powerful body. That would be the Security Council. The 6,191st meeting of the Security Council. For a couple of hours, you could say Mr. Obama was yes, president of the world. It is the story of a world that understands that no difference or division is worth destroying. All that we have built in my own country, it has brought 
Democrats and Republican leaders together. Uh, leaders like George Shultz, Bill Perry, Henry Kissinger, and Sam Nunn, who are with us here today. Barack Obama is the first president to hold two posts simultaneously. And there's a good reason for that. It's illegal. Article 1, Section 9 of the Constitution forbids any U.S. president from serving any foreign government or institution. He swears an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. But now Barack Obama has sworn allegiance to the global government and the United Nations that he heads up. Let that sink in real good. Barack Obama now heads the United Nations Security Council. You cannot serve two masters, and Obama isn't. He's selling out the last vestiges of sovereignty that this country had. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the destruction of our nation, and it's also high treason. Obama's lies are obvious and out in the open. He hides in plain sight. And from the moment he took office, his lies have only increased. Despite the fact that his ratings have dramatically dropped since Election Day, from the mid-80s to the low 40s, a large portion of Americans still gullibly hang on his every word. It is bringing entertainment to thousands of people. Through its magic, we are able to enjoy a combination of the radio, motion pictures, and the stage right in the comfort of our own homes, simply by pushing a button and turning a dial. These cells with their electrical charges are scanned by a stream of electrons, completing 30 pictures a second. Compare that crude picture with these of today, and you can judge for yourself how far along the road to perfection television has traveled. Most people still today think that all entertainment uh, to do with movies, drama, is, is, is there for nothing more than their entertainment. It never ever was that case. Of course, television can't perform such miracles as this, yet. But perhaps there's no harm wishing that it could. The greatest social, social med uh, messages are promoted through movies and drama, high drama, through the fixation of emotive sequences, emotional sequences, not logical, factual sequences, but pushing points across in an emotion, emotional way which register and fix in the mind. So emotional content is very, very important rather than going through an actual discussion or an argument using logic and facts. There's no debate. And when you're being downloaded through fiction, your guard is down, the sensor part of your brain is not in, uh, in action. It isn't saying, yes, I agree with this, I disagree with that, as you would in a debate or a lecture. You're actually in an alpha state, being completely downloaded with new ideas. Throughout history, social engineers have refined techniques designed to control large populations. Uh, about 100 years ago, this big organization with many branches uh, they wanted to rule the world, basically, using Britain as a nucleus of, of a system, an embryo, uh, which also was going to be joined with the U.S. Uh, under the Anglo-American establishment. Uh, wrote about the kind of culture and the changes of culture over a hundred year period that they would actually design, implement and bring in. And um, H.G. Wells talked about it too. He talked about arenas. He says arenas could be put up across the world for sports, for instance. Now, at that time, sports was something that children, uh, school children were into. Adults became adults and got onto adult things. So it was unimaginable at the time that people could actually believe that uh, uh, there was even a need for adult sports and entertainment, never mind having ar arenas built across the world. But he said, we can do this, and you know, foist basically a, a sports culture for the males using a tribal system, we're all tribal to an extent, that's why we even bother to vote for a tribal leader. Uh, this is well understood, that's why we're supplied with these leaders. And because the, the average man was to become more disengaged from his own destiny, as the expert class arose, it was decided that, that the males would get their, their, their outlet, basically, um, being gradually becoming helpless as, as males, through sports. Therefore, they'd have a tribal team they could identify with, 
they could um, 